All right, in this video, I'm dedicating it straight to OSPF. I'm going to talk about simple connections with OSPF, and then I want to show you what a stub area is, a totally stubby and a not so stubby area. So I have basic configs put on here. I haven't in, uh, I haven't uh, put on uh, OSPF yet, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways on how to implement OSPF on. Uh, uh, on an interface for our router. So here are our interfaces and let me move them up actually. And let's configure OSPF. And this side is going to be area one. This side is going to be area zero. Let's get to it. So let's start with uh, router three here. So configure it. Uh, config T. Router OSPF and then the process ID. Whatever you want to name it. Let's just keep it uh, one and it's best practice to have in your whole entire topology the same process ID so it's not confusing. Router OSPF, uh, router one. Router OSPF one, yes. All right, give it a router ID. So this is router three, so 3.3.3.3. And uh, let's do a network statement for our interface. So the interface right here is 23.23.23.0 23 and let's put it in area zero. So I can be lazy and I'll put every interface I have on area on router three in area zero. Uh, this isn't a good practice at all. It's not even a best practice, not a good practice. It's actually bad practice. But I'm going to show you that I'm just going to put everything in area zero. 0, .0, .0, .0. 0, .0, .0, .0. 0, .0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, area. Uh, I could do a decimal value or I could do it in an IP address format. Well, if it's all zeros, then let's put it in an IP address format like that. All zeros. Look at that. All right. How do I know what interfaces are participating in OSPF? Here's your command. Do show IP OSPF interface brief. I have two interfaces participating in OSPF. Loopback 3, fast Ethernet 1, caught everything with that network 0000. zero, zero, zero. Sweet. Uh, router 2. Config T. Router. OSPF. 1. Uh, router ID. 2.2.2.2. .2 I'm going to go to the interface of Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 facing R3. And I'm going to do, uh, what is it? IP OSPF. Uh, look up here. Process ID. 1. Area. 0. Enter. Neighbor, come up. Neighbor, come up. Yeah, there you go. We got a neighbor adjacency. Do show run section router. Notice I did not put a network command in there. Why? Because I did it on the interface. Do show run the interface. Uh, there you go. So I don't need to do a network command. I can do it on the interface level. Let's go into fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 and do the same thing. Interface F0 slash 0. Can I do the up command? I can. But this interface is going to be in area 1. All right. Let's do that. Enter. Boom. All right. Uh, router 1 now. Config T. Router. OSPF 1. Router ID. 1.1.1.1. One, 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 one. Uh, it may seem like I'm going quickly, but the good thing about uh, watching videos is you could uh, rewind it. So you could see what, what uh, commands I'm doing if I'm going too quick for you. Uh, okay, uh, let's do a network command here and let's be very specific and capture just this one interface and put it in area 1. So that is 12.12.12.1, 0.0.0.0, area 1. Boom. What else I got here? Yeah. Why didn't I get it? Oh, there it is. Man, that was slow. Neighbor adjacency, right? So, uh, end show IP route. Let's see what OSPF looks like. All right. I have some directly connected interfaces, directly connected networks, and I also have uh, inter-area routes, which means I'm getting some type 3 LSAs. Uh, that's what OI, what IA means, intra-area, so not in my area. 
All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's talk about a stub network. What a stub network means is I'm going to block uh, external routes. Meaning, if I uh, redistributed some routes from area zero, like let's say it's connecting to some some interface over here, and I was running EIGRP, and I redistributed into OSPF, if I made area one a stub area, I would block that. So let me actually configure that real quick. Uh, interface, loopback, um, I don't know, 33. IP address, 33, 33, 33, 33. 255, 255, 255, 255. Uh, then I'll put it for EIGRP. Router, EIGRP 1. No auto. Summary. Network 33. 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 .0. Router, OSPF 1. Redis nope. Redistribute. EIGRP. Autonomous System 1. Subnets. Enter. Show IP OS, uh, EIGRP interface, one interface. All right, let's slide over to router one. We should see an OE2 route for a network 33, 33, 33. Show IP route. Show IP route. Uh, oh. See what happens when you do a bad practice and you lump everything into, um, uh, whatchamacallit, you do the 000 network command on uh, uh, show run on router three. Remember I did that, that whole zero network? This is why it's not even semi good practice. It is horrible practice. Uh, show run section router OSPF. Look at that network command. Let's get rid of that because it didn't work in my favor. Uh, router OSPF one, no. Let's copy this. I'll lose my neighbor adjacency, but I will bring them back up. Uh, what was it? Uh, network. You know what? Let's go into the interface itself. I like doing that. F one slash zero. IP OSPF one area zero. Interface, loopback, uh, what was my loopback? Three? Loopback three. IP, OSPF, actually up arrow. Boom. Do show IP, OSPF interface brief. Good. Now, this should actually show up. This 33 network should show up as an OE2 route. Hit enter. Boom, there it is. So, we are getting an external route in area one. Do we need to know about it? No, not necessarily. If we have an area and it's not a backbone area and we're distributing routes into OSPF, everything has to flow through area zero. So why even bombard our other areas with these external routes? Let's just get rid of it and let's kind of give a default route to different areas. So we got to uh, make area one a stub network and when you create a stub area in OSPF just a stub area whoop, What happened here? Uh, we will block all all Type 5 LSAs, all right, so I'll show you how to do that What we do is we go into uh, the ABR into uh, the ABR of that area, so the ABR of area one is router two, and we're going to say area one is going to be a stub, and then every uh, router in area one we have to say is a stub network. All right, so let's start on router two. Uh, config, no, not config T, router OSPF one, area one. What are my options? Uh, stub. That's it, area one stub. Boom, hit that. I should drop my adjacency because one uh, requirement to become an OSPF neighbor and, and uh, have a full adjacency is the stub flag has to match. So if the stub flag is up, then the other router needs to have the stub flag up as well. So let's do that on router one. 
router ospf one area one stub enter boom i bet you that oe2 route is gone and i now will have a default route let's check this out and show ip route what that e2 route is gone i do not know about the 333 or the 33 33 33 network like I had up here there it is notice I have no gateway of last resort set but I go down here I have a gateway of last resort set look at that the next top 12.12.12.2 is this guy right here R2 and uh, that E2 route is gone can I ping it uh, I should be ping 33, 33, 33, 33, enter. What? All right, cool. So I actually made my routing table smaller for more efficiency. Can I make it even smaller by getting rid of OIA routes? OIA routes are routes from other areas other than the one I'm in. Uh, why would I want to do that? Well, if you're going to push a default route to me, uh, then why do I actually need to know about other uh, routes in the area or other routes in different areas there is no reason if you're gonna have a stub network let's make it a totally stubby network let's get rid of these OIA routes here's the cool thing about it it is Cisco proprietary but it's Cisco proprietary on one router that is the ABR so you know how I did uh, what was it show run show run section router ospf know that i just did area one stub well i will add another flag well not a flag but i'm going to add a option to router two called no summary which means i will block type three lsa's from entering area one type three lsa's are those oia routes and I don't have to configure that with all of the routers in area one. Cisco proprietary. Watch this. Enter. Slide over. Router one. Look at that. OIA routes. Show IP route. Look at that. No OIA routes. Sweet. That means I even shrunk my routing table even smaller. And... I push the default route and I should still be able to get to all of the routes. So what other OIA routes did I learn about before? 23.3.3.3. Let's let's ping that. Ping 3.3.3.3. Boom. Still works. All right. Now this not so stubby area. What is that? Not so stubby area. Uh hold on just a second. Chase. Stop it. Give me that. It's my dog. He's playing with his little squeaky toy. Jace, I'm making a video here. All right, not so stubby area. Let's uh, let's say that in this stub area of area one, we have uh, another routing protocol connecting to it. Uh, the thing about stub areas is that you cannot have type 5 LSAs enter into that area. What are type 5 LSAs? Type 5 LSAs are external routes, E2s. You cannot have that. So what a not so stubby area is, is when you redistribute routes into this stub area, they are turned into magical type 7 LSAs. Type 7 LSAs are type 5s in disguise. Uh, I'm not joking. That's what it is. So, uh, show IP interface brief. Let me see what interfaces I have up here. I have loopback 11, which is not participating in OSPF. Show IP OSPF interface brief. It is not. Actually, loopback 1 isn't even participating in it either. So, I could put these two routes or these two networks into EIGRP, redistribute that in, and uh, um, that will turn our area into a not so stubby area. And we'll turn those e, e routes that aren't supposed to be in there, you'll see them as 
N1 or N2 routes, all right? So let's uh, go to config T, router, EIGRP, let's just say 11. Uh, no auto summary, and network, 1.1.1.1 uh, with all zeros, and network 11 with all zeros. Go into OSPF, redistribute, EIGRP 11 uh, with the subnets, enter. A uh, router is currently in ASBR while having only one area, which is a stub area. Oh, I need to change the stub flag to an NSSA stub flag, all right? So let's go to area one, and let's say, there it is, NSSA. Specify that for a not so stubby area. And I can do uh, no summary to make it a totally not so stubby area, uh, but I'll, I'm just gonna say area one NSSA. Area one is configured as stub area already. All right, so, all right, all this PF is being a pain. Um, I have to do the no command. Stub. Hit the up arrow. Good. Uh, now I need to do this for router two. Do the same thing. Up arrow. No. Area one. NSSA. Enter. I thought I did a no here. Area is configured as a stub area already. No. All right. Hit the up arrow. Do show run section OSPF. Area, oh, because area one stub still on there. Get rid of that. No, area one stub. Neighbor adjacency, come up. Yes, good. Uh, so let's look at the routing table. I should expect uh, 1.1.1.1 .1 .1 as in O N2 route. So let's do that. Uh, N show IP route. I still see an E2. Wait, wait. No. Uh, what happened here? OSPF loading full. Yes. Show IP route. Okay. Uh, what is? Oh, I didn't. Wait, I redistributed it. Did I not? Redistribute EIGRP 11 subnets. Uh, maybe the redistribution command didn't take. Uh, let me do that. Let me show run section router OSPF. Yeah, it's in there. Area one, redistribute, right? Show IP EIGRP. Uh, interface. Yeah, that's working. Uh, so let's do some troubleshooting. What is what is happening here? Maybe it's taking a long time for it to show up. Oh, that's all it was. It just took some time. So, so here we go. N2 routes. That means we are receiving type 7 LSAs. Type 7 LSAs are from the not-so-stubby areas. And... Look at that, N2, and I have E2. E2 means I'm receiving type 5 LSAs from router 3, redistributing EIGRP into OSPF. N2 routes means I have an interface in a not-so-stubby area receiving type 7 LSAs into uh, OSPF. So router 1 is doing that. So router 3 should actually uh, see those type 7 LSAs translated into type 5 from our good friend R2 who translates them because type 7 LSAs are only allowed to stay in the not so stubby area. Uh, once it hits an ABR like R2, it will translate it into uh, uh, type 5. So let's go into router 3 and show IP route. And look at all those E2 routes. Woo! Uh, so we should be able to ping it, right? If R1 is a not so stubby area, show IP route, he should have OIA routes and uh, 
oh, he doesn't have a default route. Huh. So when you actually do a not so stubby area, you can say, uh, let's push a default route into that area. So uh, it can get full reachability throughout the whole OSPF network. Because if I were to try to ping 3. Uh, 33, 33, 33, 33, it would not work. Because it doesn't have it doesn't have a route, right? So let's, let's stop that. Was that Control Shift Six? Or I'll just let it go through. Um, so let's push out a default route. When we have a not so stubby area, we have to actually do that in uh, OSPF router OSPF one area one NSSA. And when we did that question mark command, we can do uh, default information originate. Originate type 7 default. Originate type 7 default into NSSSA. No. Do not send some real. You know what? It's not that. It's not default information originate. I believe we can do that, but I'm going to do the no summary and let's see what happens. Uh, no. Summary. No. Sum. Sum. Enter. Uh, up arrow. Let's see what happens. All right, good. So we should actually see a summary route in, uh, not a summary route, a default route in R1. Show IP route. Look at that. We got rid of our OIA routes. We're, we are in a not so stubby area and we have a default route. Everything should work. So let's ping from external to external, uh, EIGRP to EIGRP um, when we redistribute it through OSPF. So ping 33, 33, 33, and let's source it, source from loopback1, which is the IP address of 1.1.1.1, and R3 knows that from an external route. All right, ping, boom, so happy. If, you were, if there was a camera on right now, I'd be smiling, and you would see it. But this is greatness with OSPF. Stub areas, totally stubby, not so stubby area. You can see how OSPF stub areas, they block certain LSAs, and how you can uh, uh, shorten the routing table with uh, default routes, and you just name them a stub totally stubby or not so stubby or not so totally stubby yeah awesome words here so uh yeah this was a great video it went a little bit longer but i thought that this was actually great and very informative you can do uh, the network statement to enable ospf on certain interfaces you can actually go into the interface itself and, and implement ospf which i kind of like that but you know yeah that's it so uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. Uh, subscribe to me. Um, I, I, I love just informing people, helping people out, uh, just everything like that. So uh, I hope this was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.